Having looked at the process of replication in general, I want to talk about how supercoiling is created and regulated during replication. Here's a question for you. For the purposes of this question, you should assume that the ends of the DNA are not able to freely rotate. As helicase unwinds double-strand DNA during replication, what kind of supercoiling is generated in the region ahead of the replication fork? You might want to pause the video and think about it. Well, to answer this question, let's do a thought experiment in which we have a section of DNA 400 base pairs in length that is about to undergo replication. In our thought experiment, the ends of the DNA are not free to rotate, and we're not going to allow supercoiling, at least at first. This will enable us to see how tension accumulates in the DNA. If we assume this DNA is relaxed, then it's easy to assign values for twist, writhe, and linking number. The DNA is not supercoiled, so W equals zero. We can assume 10 base pairs per turn, so a 400 base pair section of DNA will have a twist of 40, and L also equals 40. Now, imagine that 100 base pairs of this DNA are unwound by helicase. Remember, the ends can't rotate, and we're not allowing supercoiling. Given those conditions, what are the new values of T, W, and L for this 400 base stretch of DNA? Well, because we're not allowing supercoiling, the writhe must equal zero. The ends have not rotated and no DNA strands have been broken, so linking number cannot change from the original state and must still be 40. And because L is 40 and W is zero, the twist must also still equal 40. But because one section is completely unwound, the twist is not evenly distributed along the length of this section. For this unwound stretch of 100 bases, the two strands don't cross each other at all. So T, W, and L all equal zero for the unwound stretch. So all of the DNA strand crossing must occur in the remaining 300 base pair section. If we don't allow supercoiling, then rise for this section remains zero. But linking number must equal 40, so twist must also equal 40. This section of DNA is therefore overwound, because 300 base pairs are twisted around each other 40 times, when they would prefer 10 base pairs per turn. If we allow supercoiling, then the twist will return to 30, or 10 base pairs per turn, the linking number will be unchanged at 40, and so writhe must be positive 10. Therefore, ahead of the replication fork, positive supercoiling will be generated. If this supercoiling were not relieved or resolved, then it would accumulate to the point where helicase would not be able to continue separating the two strands, and replication would stop. So topoisomerases must exist ahead of the replication fork to deal with the supercoiling. Since the cell needs to remove positive supercoiling, either type 1b or type 2 topoisomerases would work. The topoisomerases that remove most of the supercoiling are actually type 2 enzymes, such as DNA gyrase in E. coli. This enzyme can introduce negative supercoiling, which counteracts positive supercoiling. Because cells must unwind DNA for transcription and replication, our DNA is normally kept in a state that favors unwinding, namely a negatively supercoiled state. The positive supercoiling generated by unwinding DNA will therefore bring the writhe of the DNA closer to zero. In bacteria, negative supercoils are introduced by the activity of DNA gyrase. In eukaryotes, DNA is wrapped around histones in nucleosome core particles in the manner shown in this figure. Take a moment and figure out what kind of supercoiling the DNA is doing here as it wraps around the histones. Maybe pause the video and think about it. Well, I hope that you concluded that this is left-handed spiral writhe, which represents negatively supercoiled DNA. So DNA is packaged into nucleosomes in a negatively supercoiled way, which favors separation of the strands during initiation of replication or transcription. In the next video, I'll describe how initiation of replication occurs and is regulated in bacteria.